I think by now people see that we we are using a lot of technology and view to master uh, being one of the core technologies that we are uh, using in, in a lot of the training we do. Not only are we using metabolic arts uh, and the view to master in, in laboratory settings, but we also use it a lot in the field as well. We need a technology that was accurate enough, that was re repeatable enough, that we could trust the data that came in by getting a technology that allowed us to assess them more out in the field, but now big, use big data instead. The sheer amount of data that we could now collect on them would bring a far higher accuracy and repeatability of their condition and day-to-day and -day changes than, than what we ever had before. The reason for why we are doing so much metabolic analysis in the field is that what you do in a lab is, is a snapshot where a lot of things have been standardized. We know that racing is far from being homogeneous in triathlon. It's actually very changing conditions. Climate is changing, a location is changing, uh, there are, like even a venue is changing, uh, dynamics is changing, there are so many things that are changing. Where we can learn the most and optimize the best in the training is actually in, let's say, in the situation where they do most of the training. When you have a metabolic analyzer, it allows us to di almost directly assess how much energy comes from the aerobic system, how much comes from the anaerobic system. Instead of just having a program that is lasting for 16 weeks or half a year or whatever, we can basically say, okay, this is where we, where we need to be, this is how large the engine has to be, and then basically view to mass allows us to assess how effectively our program is on their adaptation, and then either amplify certain workouts or shift a little bit the stimulus to other workouts to bring forward that utilization that we're looking for. From Rio to uh, Tokyo, one of the things that we saw in Christian and Gustav that was that we saw that their performance increased by 19% in average. And the reason for why it improved by 19% and today it's even more is because if you don't know where to prioritize your training, you go by a, by a statical program, the problem with that is that athletes are very ambitious. They are pushing really hard, but the consequence of that can also be that you build a stronger, let's say, anaerobic power or engine uh, than, than the aerobic part is, so you become less sustainable. But what we need is a very strong aerobic engine that can last through the whole race. The view to master is the only tool that truly gives us a fairly direct insight into one, the athlete's utilization. And this is something we know that we need to adjust. So we can basically look at, okay, what is the oxygen consumption and race power? And what is it at VU2 max? And then basically find that perfect balance there that sets them up for the best possible performance on race day. The second part of it is also that we know that as you scale a program, we know that larger volume in training brings out better performance. The correlations speaks for themselves. and the closer you get to maximum sustainable energy expenditure, the more critical every detail in your plan becomes and intensity control becomes perhaps the most critical thing to, to, to get right. And the only way to know which intensity to target to build the engine or tune the engine for a particular race is still today and will be for I don't know how long time by assessing the utilization, auction utilization between race pace, or let's say required race pace and VO2 max in order to make sure that you end up with a carbohydrate utilization that's sustainable for the race distance.